cannot believe this. I, I really thought this year was going to be different. I really thought... Oh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm back. Yeah, it's me, season two at Rassing. If you were thinking, has it changed? Have things got better? No, they've not. Mahika, the lad in the back. Only guy I signed for some actual money. I mean, the, the only silver lining here is that this ambulance... Yeah, that was the second most expensive signing this summer. And the only of us signing this summer for money, at least. I'm fine. I'm fine. Welcome back to season two here at Rassing. How's it going, folks? And welcome back. It's episode number seven of our Racing Let's Play. Today, it's part of Primera. It's the start of season number two. And as someone pointed out oh so funnily in the comments of the last episode, which of course was a couple of days ago, we had a day off, a catch-up day, dare I say, for those of you who needed, you know, a chance to binge. Um, we've reached the Primera division. So the series called uh, Park to Primera. We've done it. We've Finish the Let's Play, pack it up, let's go home. Now, of course, that's not actually the case. And if you missed last episode, well, it was the playoffs. I'm going to assume at this point you know what happened in those playoffs. Disappointment, shall we say. We ended up losing, of course, in that final. We enter the new Spanish third division. A bit of a weird format. There are two separate leagues of 20 teams and only the top two teams go up. Yeah, there's no playoffs, there's no nonsense, we have to be one of the very best, and while the board expectation this year is that we will be one of the very best, they want us to win promotion from this league, and uh, well, truth be told, going into this season, if we look at the preview, I am feeling just a little bit of pressure because the bookies really do have us alongside Deportivo as two of the teams that should be going up this season. Anyway, some slightly positive news off the pitch. I've signed a new contract. They've decided that I'm not the worst manager in the world. And yeah, they've given me a deal for another, well, three years. I'm hoping that if we were to underperform this year, they might give me a bit more time on the basis of I'm on £3,000 a week and they don't have the money to pay the compensation to pay off my contract early. Although, I, I suppose we'll find out as the season goes, and well, hopefully it won't come down to that line of thinking. Worth noting just while we're here, the debt is slightly better than it once was. Of course, that is down to season ticket sales. In terms of the wage spend for this year, I've actually managed to cut the wage spend by about £10,000 to what it was last year. We've saved some pennies, and while we've been making some moves, I suppose at this point... We should have a look at the players we've signed because I'm hoping they're going to make a difference for us this year. Just before we get into things, if you are enjoying the series, drop a like on it. Genuinely, it helps the videos out massively in terms of them getting pushed out by the mysterious YouTube algorithm. Equally, leave a comment. Let me let me know who your player of the series is so far. And we'll now reveal, did they survive the culling? Because... I did have a bit of a tidy up of the first team. And actually, rather than go to the transfer screen, I think this is the screen I'm going to show you the new signings via, just because it's quite a nice way of visualising, I suppose, where these new pieces of the jigsaw puzzle slot in. What I will say straight away is there is plenty of familiar faces in the starting 11, and you will notice a few injuries and suspensions. Naturally, those players will not be playing the first game of the season, which is against Amor Bieta. So anyway, the first of the players that we've signed, perhaps the man I'm most excited about is Rafa Di Facente. Now, you may remember we'd already agreed to sign him last January, but it was a bit of a waiting game. He was playing in the same division as us last year. He got a 7.43 average rating. I feel like for someone to perform that well with a team that didn't get promoted and didn't win the playoffs is really impressive. Obviously, I'm hoping... He's going to put in that kind of level of performance for us this year. Really good box-to-box -box midfielder, 28 years old, bit of experience, super consistent, hates big games. Um, we're not in playoffs this year, so we're not going to bottle those. And while Diva Sente is not the only new addition in at centre mid, because alongside him, a new partner in crime in Reco. This man was playing in the league above us last year. He was playing in the La Liga Santander, the kind of La Liga 2 division, shall we say. He got four goals, five assists. Unfortunately, uh, the team he was playing for, uh, Alcorcon, um, they got relegated. They're not in our division, so he's not going to get a chance at any kind of immediate revenge. But for a player to get four goals, five assists, and above a 7.0 rating at a relegated team, at least to me, bodes quite well for what he might be able to do for us. Slightly more defensive in nature, but a really versatile midfielder. And again, at 26 years old, a little bit more experience being thrust into the team. And while the final of the new midfielders we have is Bicho, 
Um, that's going to be a name I have to be careful when I say. He looks very, very good though. 25 years old and similar to a few of these other players, he was playing around our level last year, was released on a free. We've snapped him up. He is kind of the Cejudo replacement, which is a, a pretty big person to be trying to fulfill the role of in the team. You may have noticed that this year the roles have kind of flipped around a little bit. So Bicho is going to play as a Trek Cortista on the left. Cedric, who of course wasn't available at the end of last season when we really needed him, he's now going to play on the right as an inside forward. And well, ahead of our midfielders, we've got a new addition in the final third in Rafa Mojica, the only player we signed this year for actual cash. £165,000 paid. We've signed him from Leeds United. He had a, an okay year last year playing for Las Palmas in the division above the one we play in now. I kind of view him as a bit of competition, I suppose, for Foster uh, in the striking position. Unfortunately, he is injured, so he won't be playing the first game today. But a young Spanish talent with great finishing, really well-rounded physicals. I feel like for this kind of level, he's ideal. He is super versatile. Unfortunately, much like last season, uh, the restriction rules in terms of registration are quite strict and uh, well, versatility is going to be key. You may notice there are two new men in the starting eleven in the defensive department, alongside Matic, Hill and Lopez, who I was really, really happy with last year. We've got in a new goalkeeper in Machado. He is 20 years old, signed from Porto, capped at under 21 level for Portugal. He looks really, really solid. Lots of room to grow. I'm hoping we're going to be able to really nurture him into a, a long-term first-team goalkeeping option. And well, alongside him, it's another player from Porto, this time on loan, in Carassa. 28 years old, a bit of experience, comes with that added versatility, which I've already talked about. Super useful. He can slot in at centre mid. But for us, he is going to offer some competition at right back. Of course, Lars Gerson has left us. We needed a new man. Carassa is that man. And uh, yeah, he is a really, really well-rounded fullback with plenty of attacking ability. So casting our eye to the bench, there's a few familiar faces here. The likes of Gibua, Kapani, Foster, players who were really important to our first team last year. I have no doubt they're going to be important this year to us, but the fact that they're on the bench, at least in my current perceived best eleven. Gives you an idea of the progress we've made. Alongside them, though, there are a few new men, including Zacharias Gailan. I hope I'm saying that correctly. As you can see here, he is from Morocco. We signed him from Barcelona on a freebie. Last year, he was playing for Barcelona B in the same tier that we were playing in last year. He looks like a pretty good player. Very, very good technicals. Exceptionally quick. Can play a whole host of positions. And at 19 years old, a really, really bright spark with plenty of potential. Elsewhere, we've got another player from Barcelona. Another loan at E. I don't want to lean on the loan options too much. But at the same time, when they're available, I'm going to use them. Akiyeme here is also on loan from Barcelona. He is a good little left back. Of course, Lopez last year had a lot of injuries, so a player who will probably feature in the first team semi-frequently. And elsewhere, a few players promoted kind of from the youth team, players who were kind of fringe players last year, like Alvaro Mantilla, um, they're going to find themselves in some regular first team football, I imagine. Uh, we've, as I've already said, cut down the wage budget quite significantly. There were a fair, fair few kind of senior players that went, a fair few players who were perhaps slightly more experienced first team players who have moved on. Zahudo, of course, a huge miss after his retirement. Lars Gerson has left us and gone to another team playing in our current division. All in all on the transfer front, though, really happy. Mahika, the only player that came in for some money. A few players did get loaned out, like Bustos, players who just didn't fit into the, the strict squad registrations we have. We did also sign a couple of 18-year-olds, uh, including Vinhas in on loan, simply because they don't need to be registered. Also, before we move into the game, Yerai Kabanzon on the bench for today's game, a product of our academy. When we came, he was listed as our hot prospect. This year, he's training with the first team. Maybe this is going to be his time to shine. So in terms of team news for today's game, we're going to be sticking with the 4-2-3-1 in terms of shape. As I already mentioned, there's a few little changes of roles in there. Bicho could have a big, big role, I feel like, and big boots to fill following Cejudo's retirement. Elsewhere, Torre is going to play at advanced playmaker. Foster is going to hold down his position at striker because Mejica's unavailable. And Mantilla... Fairly big moment for the 21-year-old, a product of our academy. Sliding in at centre-back because Oscar Heel 
is suspended. We are taking on Amor Brietta. They are predicted to finish 15th in the league. This is the kind of game that should be a nice, comfortable win to start the season. Let's get things off to a flyer and uh, we'll give ourselves plenty of optimism for what's going to be a tough season. Given the fact that only two teams go up automatically, you know, getting off to a slow start might just mean that your whole season is a write-off very, very early. Of course, plenty of new phases in the first team. I think there's 10 new first team players in our squad of 25. I I'm hoping they're going to hit the ground running and some of our current players are going to be able to perform to a similar level they did last year. That was an early chance. Steve Vicente with the ball in. Bitcho at the back post hitting the woodwork from a header. Cesar with the ball out for them. Of course, a few changes at the back, a few enforced. Going to be really interested to see how Machado does in goal at 20 years old. Bit of pressure on the youngster. Never really got a regular run of first team football at Porto's Academy. Of course, come to us to play regular first team football. We have still got the likes of Crespo in the team if we need to call upon them, but I'm willing to give the youngster the chance, and on paper, he looks like the superior option. Really nice build-up player. Carassa hits it, tipped onto the crossbar, and the keeper clutches onto it as Cedric bears down on goal. There's definitely been, you know, an influx of Portuguese influence into the team this year. You've got players like Reco, Carassa, Machado as well. Very excited to see how they do. We kind of looked across teams like Porto, looked to their B teams, looked to the players they were releasing, and we are... I suppose, poised as a big fish in a small pond to be able to have the pulling power to sign players that perhaps other teams in the division can't sign, even if our finances are a bit compromised. And well, what is not compromised is Lyle Foster's goal-scoring ability. Of course, he scored on his debut in the first game of the season last year. He scored on the first game of the season this year. Mantillo with the header forward. Cedric, all on his lonesome, really bringing it forward. Foster, the only man ahead of him, Passes it through perfectly, it's got to be said. Lovely finish there, 1-0. Um, the kind of player Foster who, if he has a good year this year, I might be desperate to sign permanently. And well, I thought that late first half goal might be the last chance. There could be another here, though. Ball whipped into the box. It's going to be cleared away, but only as far as Di Vicente. Not the most defensive of midfielders, Di Vicente, but alongside him, I'm hoping that Recco is going to add some balance to the force. Of course, Gibua is an option on the bench. As much as I love Gubua, his bookings last season were infuriating. I think he had the most yellow cards in the whole division. I'd, I couldn't really trust him at ball with a midfielder, but as an option on the bench, obviously he's going to be good. Pablo still in that centre attacking mid. Pablo's still around. We didn't sell him, although there was a little bit of interest. It didn't ever materialise in a bid. And well, that should have materialised in a goal. Cedric with the last effort of the first half smashes it over. I'm actually going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. I feel like last year I was too nice. N no more Mr. Nice Jack today. I'm shouting demand more. I'm getting angry. I'm getting mean. That was awful, lads. And now we're gone here. And you know what? I think we're going to make some changes. Bitcho's picked up an injury, which is not what we want to see. I'm going to bring in Hardy, who, of course, we signed last year from Barcelona on one wing. I'm actually wondering about taking Cedric off on the other wing as well. Maybe I can move Cedric up front and then bring in Zacharias Galian. I feel like this guy needs a, needs a nickname. Can play on the right, he can play on the left. I love the fact that in Hardy and Galian, we've got two players who are just so versatile and so so quick and pacey. On off the bench, we can tire out teams for well 70 minutes chasing the ball like this and just inject some pace onto the wings and cause them all kinds of issues. Anyway, Reco with the ball, it dinks over to Carassa, who at right back has had a lot of influence on the game, it feels like today. Of course, the wing backs committing nice and high up the pitch, trying to cause them some issues on the overlaps. And well, we've given away the ball there in a bad position. Orozco now bringing the ball forward for them. Matic, though, the fans player of the year last year. He's just like an absolute wall at the back. Massive tackle by him. And well, it's Carassa once again down the far side. Inside to Pablo, back to Carassa, Di Vicente. I'm expecting some bangers from Di Vicente, really. Oh, that was nice, wasn't it? Galian goes down. It's going to be a penalty. Pablo Torres on it by default. We could put Di Vicente on it. We've not really got an out-and-out -out penalty taker. I'm going to put Di Vicente on it over Torre. He probably is the best of our new additions when it comes to the penalty-taking department. Can he get a goal on his debut here, the number eight? He's had a great game so far. He smashes it into the bottom corner. No problemo for him. Hopefully that's going to be the first of many. Really nice finish. Puts him up to a 7.4 rating, which is the second best, only behind Carassa. It is very nice, isn't it, when your new signings are just the standout performers on the first game of a new season. 
We've been the better team here. We've been dominant. And with 10 minutes left, we deserve to be where we are right now. And well, Amor Bieta, I think they've given up. The, the, I thought the game was going to fizzle out. There could be another chance here. The ball's whipped in. Nabai now with it. I mean, I'd love to keep a clean sheet first game, especially without Oscar Heal at centre-back. One of our big, important players of last year was worried that we might miss him today. But to be fair, we've been just dominant, both in possession and out of possession. Gallian back to Recco. Di Vicente. is going to be on the overlap on the right. Tries to play through Cedric. That is an inch-perfect pass, weighted to perfection. Back to Di Vicente. His effort's blocked. Carassa, though, could still put it into a danger area. Pamplo has an effort. I mean, I kind of wish we'd scored another because I feel like we probably should have with the chances we had there. With 30 seconds left, I'm anticipating this to be a pointless highlight, but maybe there's a light twist in the tail. As long as it's not us conceding, I, I don't care what this is. What, what is this football match? I don't know why. What? What? Answers on a postcard as to why I've been shown that. It finishes 2-0 here. That was a really good performance. I do feel like the gap in quality between the best teams and kind of the worst teams in this division is going to be fairly big, especially compared to last year, of course, where there were a fewer teams in our league. That said, we've got off to the best possible start, and there are some very good teams in this division. Players, uh, Teams like uh, Leonessa, Deportivo, FC Andorra, Sociedad's B team I expect to be a problem. Even teams like Real Union and Bilbao Athletic were teams who caused us problems last year. I was a little bit annoyed when I realised we were in the same divisions as them for another year in a row. Anyway, unfortunately for us, Bicho's going to be out for a little while, so he's probably going to miss the next couple of games. Carassa, though, had a really, really good debut at right back. Last year, playing in Liga Nosh, did not have the best of displays, but dropping down a few divisions, probably in terms of quality, is going to do him a world of good, and hopefully that is a, a sign of things to come. I actually thought that Carassa got man of the match. I think Di Vicente may have even got it in the end, but he was superb. Goal on his debut, loads of attacking ability. Yes, it was from the penalty spot, but let, let's not take that away from him. He, do, he doesn't look particularly happy. But he's not got that kind of trademark Santander smile that our players had last year. We'll, we'll get it on his face by the end of the season, I promise. Let me know what you made of our transfer business. As I said, I feel like with players like Reco, Di Vicente, Bicho, they really elevate the quality a little bit more in the way of seniority. If you were wondering about some of the youngsters that we agreed to sign last January, they're playing in the B team. I didn't expect us to be able to add as much quality as we did this summer to the squad. As a result, you know, some of those players I brought in thinking, oh, they could be useful squad players. They're going to go down to the B team. They're going to get regular first team football there. Of course, we'll hope that they develop. We'll keep tabs on them. And ultimately, you know, if big offers come in for any of our regular first team players, we're in a fortuitous position where rather than looking afar to sign players in, we can probably just promote from within, which I think is a, a you know a really, really positive situation to be in. If you've enjoyed today's video, do drop a like on it. Leave me a comment. Let me know who you think the player of the season is going to be this year. And uh, well, until next time, it, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.